Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. For more information on Anne and her work, please follow these links, which will also be posted below every video. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, this is Fridays with Anne. Hello, Anne. Hi, Jos. Yeah, it's Friday again, and um, I have I would like to go on a different course this time with you and uh, ask about a, a big topic in homeopathy, something that is has been well discussed in all angles. Mm -hmm. The question of the similimum. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, uh, f of the many things in which the homeopathic community is uh, divided, this is probably one. Yeah. Um, and in order not to, uh, in order to kind of limit the topic a little bit, um, I would like to know, well, first we could start, what is your idea of AC minimum? Okay, the definition of similimum. That's a good yeah. question because we always talk about it and we're not sure we're talking about the same thing. Eh? And it's yeah. a good idea before you start any discussion, probably to define eh, your, <laughs> your terms, your yeah. words. So, yeah, similimum may be the, the, shortest, the shortest way to say it is the remedy, I would say, the remedy that is prescribed or suitable, that is the, the remedy that fits the person on the vital level. That, for me, would be the similar. Yes, okay. Yeah, it's not sure that all homeopaths mean the same thing by the similar. Yeah, definitely not if you say, um, well, this would uh, probably require further clarification, because if you just say that fits the person on a vital level, I guess some many would still agree. I guess where the bigger differentiation comes in is in terms of how long of the long? period of the patient's life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It could be like the, the best fitting remedy covering the biggest totality now. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the remedy for the person, his individual state, his way of being, Forever, like he's always been, and he will always be. Exactly. And that's two different things because if it's now in the moment, it will change. If yeah. it's as um, as individual as your fingerprints, fingerprint, it will never change. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's the big difference, I suppose. Um, um, whether you're looking for this particular remedy, which has always been and will always be the remedy for a person or if you're looking for a similimum, the closest, the most similar remedy for a current stage, situation, stage, um, episode in the, in the person's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a diff that probably is a different remedy. It doesn't have to be a different one, but it most likely will be a different one. Yeah. So. So what what do you, what do you think? What mm -hmm. is the or what is your view? What is your perspective? Oh, for me, it's quite clear, and it's no secret. I'm one of the similar believers, <laughs> <laughs> believing in that remedy that is your remedy. That is the way you are, and you're different than everybody else. And I dealt with that topic in um, the job of homeopathy. The first book, actually, yeah. mm -hmm. in English, and and on a more uh, philosophical level, and not for the general public, but for homeopaths, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason for writing this book, actually, was that in in my idea at that time, after 
almost 20 years of homeopathy, I came to the conclusion that homeopathy is um, mainly symbolic. That's, mm -hmm. let's say, the crucial uh, thesis of the book, but also that individualizing what we should do uh, according to Hahnemann, um, taking to his to its um, furthest consequence would mean that everybody needs a different remedy. That is individualizing as much as possible, which of course is undoable. You cannot have a treatment where every patient you see needs another remedy and you have to know them all. <laughs> 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 There's seven billion people in the world. Okay, okay, they're not all coming to your practice, but who is coming? You don't know among the seven billion, and they all need different remedies. And, and uh, there were people before, and there will be people after. So it's not limited to seven billion, yeah. ten billion, twenty billion. I don't know. Anyway, it, it is impossible to have a treatment that is individu individualizing so much. So the question is. How much do you have to individualize? How individual can you go? Yeah. <laughs> That's the main question. So even a similar believer like me has these questions. Like, yes, it's individualizing, but it cannot ever be like exact. We have no criterion to, to say this is like just in the heart of the matter or is close or it's a little bit further. How close can, do you have to be in order to have resonance? How far can you go from the heart of the matter and, and still have reaction? We don't know. Yeah. Don't know. yeah. So that's why I'm saying it is largely symbolic. Mm -hmm. Largely symbolic, um, also meaning that uh, in with this last remark you made that a symbol well, there are many similar symbols which you would uh, um, put under one, on one of one and the same symbol. You know that they are yeah, uh, representative. Yeah, like yeah, that's, representative. that's a better word, representative. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know you were heading there. You know because I I follow the same line of thought. Like you, if you have, for instance, you have uh, I don't know eighty thousand spiders or something. I'm, I'm not a specialist. And we have uh, in homeopathy of 10, <laughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. So what we can do now with our systematic analysis is we can um, determine the kingdom, which is great. Eh? Well, first the dimension, so it's third dimension. Okay, then the kingdom, it's animal. Then the sub-kingdom, it's spider. So we come already quite close to individualizing the group the patient is in, and then we need the spider, and then we, oh, you know, only 80,000 species to choose, which is still impossible. Yeah. So if we then have a representative of a web spider and, and a trapdoor spider and, and, and a wolf spider, that is probably good enough. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. Um, what led you to this conviction? And not not that it is close enough. I mean, what led you to the conviction that there is one say minimum for a person and not for a stage in their life? Well, first, it's a philosophical uh, um, uh, statement. In in it's it's our theory, our philosophy, uh, the way I understand the organa, uh -huh. and then it's practice. And if you if you give the the closest remedy or the remedy that covers the biggest totality, it's, mm -hmm. it's a way of putting it. I think Jan Scholten says the similium is the biggest totality the homeopath is able to perceive. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is from the point of view of the homeopath, which is also a very legitimate statement. Yeah. yeah. And very practical as well. I mean, you can never prescribe a remedy that is beyond what you can currently see. Exactly. So you do your at the best and the biggest totality you can see, that's a remedy, a suitable remedy for this patient in that moment. Mm -hmm. So, but for me, it is trying to find the similimum or prescribing the similimum is, and of course, also limited to, to my biggest totality that I can see, is 
um, how to say, not dependent on the situation. Mm -hmm. This, like the, how to say, the underlining state the patient is in. Right? Whatever his situation is, it will be triggered by the situation. Of course, we know, we talked about this, that the state is first, hmm? and his feelings come later. And the feelings are triggered by the events, by particular events, that in this particular state is um, is a trigger for another person, it, another patient, it wouldn't even be a trigger because he's not sensitive to it. Mm -hmm. And his sensitivity determines whether he will feel his state, whether it will flare up or not. So the state is first, and I'm trying to find this suitable remedy for what is first, what is the source of the feelings, of the emotions, of the, the thoughts. Eh? Our way we perceive ourselves and the world. You could almost say the world we live in. Uh -huh. The world the patient lives in. That's what I'm trying to find out. What is not only your world view, but your experience of the world. Uh -huh. And then can we match a remedy to make this as harmonious and healthy as possible? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um. I see what you mean. The yeah, so it differs in that sense. I think um, homeopathy, or well, the more of more well-known homeopaths anyway have gone beyond the mere prescribing for um, let's say symptoms or even a collection of symptoms, a totality of symptoms, and is looking for deeper um layers or essences or what you want to call it and like you mentioned Scholten is probably one of of those and uh shankaran and manjalawori um, and they all have different and i guess uh, rather high also expectations of how long a remedy should work and in which situation it should work in order to call it as a minimum mm -hmm. yeah how is it with you do you have any or or when would you know that this is as a minimum prescription yeah that's also a very good question <laughs> because <laughs> the proof of the pudding is in the eating right mm -hmm. so it is afterwards prescribing is already difficult in itself but case management is maybe an even more difficult topic that is not so well trained in homeopathic schools because you can't yeah. for long-term case management you need a long-term case follow-up and we don't have this or we don't have this opportunity in schools since the clinical training only starts at the fourth year or something right <laughs> yeah it would be a bit too long to have every training last 10 years yeah just yes. in order to follow up you know. yes but that's that's the difficulty because you have to um, you have to train yourself by experience. Mm -hmm. by of course, you have some theory on um, uh, uh, how to say it, reaction patterns. So, which reaction patterns you like to see and what they mean, and which reaction patterns are no good, no mm -hmm. good sign at all. So we know those. But in um, uh, in general, to go back to your question, I like to see the remedy work forever, which is a bit of a bold statement, I know. <laughs> but I mean, I yeah, like... And I suppose it's yeah. also um, tricky at this stage to ask for a lot of evidence backing this up because, well, hopefully the majority of the patients are still alive, right? <laughs> yeah, what well, is forever, yeah. <laughs> I, I see your point. But I mean, if a remedy is really good, really like let's say close or very close close to the individual being of the patient then what i see and this is um according to me only happening with the similar what do you see what i like to see what i expect to see what is the 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 best reaction i can dream of is that the whole state somehow loosens the patient gets more freedom in um in himself and in the situations he can react with more freedom he's less limited in conditions to be okay mm -hmm. 
Of course, I like to see all his symptoms slowly disappearing, his chronic mm -hmm. symptoms, not disappear all at once the first week, but because then I expect them to come back. Yeah. So the ideal reaction for me is like they slowly, slowly fade away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't have to um, repeat the remedy often. Yeah, but that differs from patient to patient. But I mean, not too frequent, uh, yeah. uh, frequent dosage, and it's like the patient. Um, makes steps forward and then what he the, the distance that he already did he never has to go back he, he hardly ever relapses it's like mm -hmm. he gained this already it's, this level of health is something he had he might relapse a little bit that's the time to repeat mm -hmm. but you don't have to wait until he relapses completely or he won't relapse completely what usually is the case with a partial remedy, that the patient relapses completely. Yeah? So even if he relapses a bit, and of course the patient will panic, he says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm back to where I was, because you know, then, he then remembers how good he was. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and it's mostly a sign that you have to repeat. And what happens, the more you repeat, and I mean, you don't repeat often, but let's say after half a year, or after a year, after even two years, the reaction is quicker. Mm -hmm. Even if a patient has like a big shock or something and he really relapses and he gets symptoms that he didn't have the last two or three years, maybe he had them when he saw you and then for years they were okay, something happened, the symptom came back, he just, you let him repeat the remedy, next morning he's back to, to his already advanced state of health. It acts immediately mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm talking about of a constitutional remedy, not of an acute. In an acute, that's normal. An acute mm -hmm. reaction should be immediately. Like, same 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour, not any longer. But to see this reaction from a simulimum after one or two years, that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a confirmation that the remedy is still the patient's best remedy and does the trick even quicker. It's almost like the system remembers, oh yeah, that was how good I already was. I just needed a reminder. <clears throat> mm, okay. Mm. So, can you give me a few more pointers to, because say for example, I prescribe a remedy and I'm sure this is, of course, as every homeopath, uh, I'm convinced this is the best suited remedy for this patient. And beyond that, I cannot see. I don't know if this is the best suited remedy only for now or forever, because this is all I see at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, give the remedy and the patient comes back. And, well, he could tell me a few things changed, or this improved and this got worse, or this new symptoms came up. Um, or he can tell me, yeah, I think nothing happened. And upon questioning, some things have changed as well. How would I be able then to tell a difference whether this is a partial remedy or a, a, a similimum or a half similimum? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there are more pointers, <laughs> it's a bit theoretically, but it's still, I mean, it's a very good question still very important in your case management because what are the criteria to actually yes. evaluate that you achieved what you're trying to achieve that's basically what you're asking how can we know mm, yeah. <laughs> and because we take the whole patient that means we have a lot of aspects on different levels and we all have to we have to check them all yeah and for the patient probably um, it will be also something different he's looking for in himself than yeah. you Yes, <laughs> yeah. I told you before, the patient actually doesn't know what we are trying to treat. Yeah. Of course, if it's good, they will tell you how, how they feel, but they don't know really what we are looking for and what our criteria are. Yeah? Mm -hmm. For them, mostly it's the symptoms. Did the symptoms persist or are, are they improving or do they disappear? That's yeah. for them the criteria for us, of course, in the end, it's also a criterion. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're aiming at drying up the source <laughs> of the symptoms. 
mm -hmm. not by suppressing the symptoms with the remedy that is um, prescribed on the symptoms, but by a uh, similimum that is taking away the, the source of the problem. Mm -hmm. That is what we are trying to do. And if the symptoms disappear by prescribing a similimum, then that is one of the criteria we know that, that, that we achieved, that we, uh, um, we were successful in our prescribing. Because it's not, it's not. Let's say a patient said, "I can't express anger." You give him staphylococcus. The next consultation, he says, mm, "I shouted at my spouse. Uh, I'm much better." That's not a similar prescription, right? <laughs> the, the remedy was aimed at the suppressed anger, and something happened with this anger. Well, it would be surprising if nothing happened. I mean, if the you know, doses were was okay. But if you don't prescribe on this particular expression, on this particular circumstance, but you prescribe on the state, and a, the same circumstance or a similar circumstance occurs, and the patient says, you know, this time I was able to stay calm and just tell what I had to say without shouting or exploding or throwing things around, then you have a good hint that you treated the cause of the problem not the expression mm -hmm. and that's the difference that's one of the main differences yeah um do you have a, a theory or an idea of what one is treating if i'm not looking for this if i don't have this vision or if i don't have this uh, perspective is the word um and I'm prescribing on a different totality, not the one that is aimed at a at a, yeah at this whole life minimum. Mm -hmm. um, what am I treating, and what is happening? Probably an expression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we know if we try to treat an expression of the vital. On the physical level, we call it suppression. Mm -hmm. So, what else can you call it on the mental emotional level? <laughs> it's the same thing. According to my view, it's the same thing, although your patient might be happy. But yeah, uh -huh. if an expression is taken away, then it, it needs to go on the ground and find another outlet. Uh huh, okay, yeah. So, in other words, that would mean that. If whenever I'm not prescribing a similimum, I'm suppressing. Uh, in order to suppress, uh, I think you have to be very persistent. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. I think I heard the homeopath say that you have to be persistent is stupid to suppress. And most uh -huh. homeopaths, thank God, are not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to prescribe a very wrong remedy on uh -huh. two doses too frequently. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, because it's not that easy to suppress. I'm not, I'm not afraid of suppression, you know, because a lot of homeopaths are like, oh, you yeah, yeah. what are we doing? Are we doing harm? Some people take homeopathic remedies, especially homeopaths, all of the time, you know, and it doesn't do anything. Why not? Because it has nothing to do with the state whatsoever. It doesn't yeah. do something. And they take it once. Mm -hmm. They don't take it on a daily basis, like <laughs> one or something. But if you insist on that, and a non-homeopath, let's say, yeah, or somebody who uses homeopathic remedies in an allopathic way, which sometimes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then I think you're able to suppress. Some homeopaths yeah. have other ideas, like suppression is very easy, some people are very susceptible or very sensitive, you just give one dose of a 1M and they suppress it for months, or I don't know, I don't think no, so. I don't think so either, and I think this is actually um limiting us as homeopaths even even more this is not a, a good way of looking at it i think everyone has to be conscientious and uh, responsible with the use of the, the medicines yeah. but um <clears throat> i've seen many um homeopaths being overly careful cautious yeah. and scared even to prescribe remedies yes absolutely yeah. While Hahnemann says, you know, by proving a remedy, every proving makes you better. 
makes it happier. <laughs> Approving is taking a wrong rem remedy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, this is taking any remedy anyway, yeah. Taking any remedy. Yeah. You take the remedy and you see what happens for the next few weeks. Yeah. But you don't keep it, you know, yeah. taking it all of the time. Yeah. It's not like, I don't know, allopathic remedies that you take for years. Mm, yeah, yeah. I think so, it's, I agree, I agree. I think suppression is very difficult to achieve if you are following somewhat the, those rules. Yeah. And I haven't, I haven't seen that there is a, yeah, something, a strong suppression happening. In. No. So to come back to your your very good question, that what happens if you if you prescribe, for, let's say, on an emotional level of the story, on circumstances, whatever, what happens? And the remedy is not the similitude, and that will happen many, many times in all kinds of situations, etc. Do you suppress? No, if you're not consistently you're repeating this remedy, like every time you feel some anger coming up, you swallow an, an article. But people don't usually don't do this. So every time you feel a little bit sad, let's take you know, let's take an Ignatia. Although some people do, but usually not in the hands of homeopaths. Usually they're no. self prescribers or self takers, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, I was going to say something. Um, what happens is, like in a proofing, it might have a reaction for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Let's say you take nitrimer for grief and it goes better, and then it takes maybe a week, maybe two weeks if you're very sensitive to the remedy, maybe a few weeks, and then you come back to where you originally were. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference with the similar prescription. Mm -hmm. So the difference is with the non similar prescription, I would say you touch the symptoms. Whether the symptoms are on a physical or a mental emotional level, you touch the symptoms, you treat the symptoms. And the similar one treats the person. The mm -hmm. same person. And, and that's a difference that you see in consultation. Because it's not the symptom that changed, it's the person that changed. That's why his symptom is fading away. And mm -hmm. it might be in the beginning even. Right. If I sound the same, he will use the same words, he will probably have the same complaints, but the intensity goes down, the frequency goes down. That's why I say it fades away slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. If the patient is only 10% better after two months, he probably will say your remedy didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And if he, usually, because we always write down everything, we take notes, Let's say he's a bad sleeper, and I would ask how many hours do you sleep, how many nights a week do you sleep badly, how many mm -hmm. times do you wake up. Let's say in general the patient is 10% better. Yeah. He still has six uh, sleepless nights out of seven, but before he had seven or yeah, six and a half or not. Then I would tell him, you're not much better, but only 10% means like in 10 months, you know, you're 100% better. It's just an image, of course. Yeah. But Tell the patient like that's good because your chronic state was there for a long time and evolving in one direction, namely going worse. That was what all chronic states do mm -hmm. already in the organon in the chronic diseases. Hahnemann observed this. He called it Sora, but Sora means chronicity. Every chronic disease by itself is not cured, but is getting worse in the course of time. So if you, you you can change this direction that is going on for years with your homeopathic remedy, not only to come to a halt, but even go 10% in the other direction, that's a big success. Mm -hmm. Because you change the course. You're going now, instead of going to worse, eh, to, to bad health, now you've started the course to better health which is great, even if the patient doesn't see the difference. Mm -hmm. If it's only 10% after two months, it's still miraculous. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not the thing you see with the partial prescription. What you see then usually is on the level that you prescribed, you see like a, a prompt improvement. The patient is quite enthusiastic about it, right? but it doesn't hold. You repeat the remedy, the second uh, dosage, less reaction. Mm -hmm. You go higher, 
Yeah? No reaction. You try all policies, no reaction at all. Then you know for sure this was a partial remedy. It did something even more spectacular than your similimum, you would think, but it didn't hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that would be would have been also my next question. So uh, this was a very in, interest, inspiring um, thing that you can also explain to the patient. Yeah. I think um, let's say now, as a vital prescriber or as someone who prescribes on vital level and uh, towards a vital rem remedy. I still have no certainty other than the report of the patient. So it will happen that the patient says, yeah, maybe 10% better or just this little bit better. I suppose that I can only tell over more time whether this remedy also holds or not, or whether this is yes right. And no, actually, you heard that before. A lot of homeopaths say you can see when the patient enters the room, whether the remedy works, whether his remedy works or not. Did you ever see that? Do you have the experience that your patient comes in for the first follow-up, live, of course, yeah, it's not a baby, and you go like, ah, you have like a sigh of relief because you just see that your remedy is working, whatever he will tell. He can complain now the next hour, he pays you for that, but you know, remedy is working. Yeah. And he doesn't know yet, but you can be confident. And why is that? What do you see? It's very hard to explain or to, to uh, describe. It's, what is it? A bit more relaxation maybe in the face? I don't know. But it's mm. something you can observe and you cannot describe. You, sometimes people say, oh yeah, she colored her hair. Well, it's not that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, it's not that they are dressed nicer or something that you like. It's something you see in the patient is more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. I see. I'm thinking now of uh, one or two seminars that I attended with uh, very experienced homeopaths who would yeah, prescribe on sensation level or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. And um, that's why I was asking this question. I can see where, um, where this, and I've seen it also. You can see it sometimes on video also how the patient is just yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. Even still, uh, I saw that they they presented cases um, and they gave a remedy for the patient, and the patient was better, and it seemed like a, a vital prescription. Mm -hmm. And then after seven years, the remedy doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. And they prescribe something different and it works very well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm just asking from that point of view, uh, I guess only time will tell for, for us whether or how long this um, prescription may hold. Yeah, we don't know, of course. We don't have the sensation uh, theory long enough to start mm. with. Yeah. So probably 10 years old, so we, we need another 10, 20 years to see yeah. how uh, this, this will hold. But many homeopaths, also sensation prescribers, uh, would change a remedy or the patient would claim, I have changed. Mm. Because you don't stay the same your whole life. And because of your remedy, I have changed because yeah. you know the issues that I had before are not there anymore, etc. Mm -hmm. So there are sensation prescribers who, who claim that the patient might need a, a mineral remedy, and and the the remedy did worked wonders for two three years, and now they need the animal. And Josh is uh, um, published a book on that. For me, it's a bit hard to um, understand that the change can be anything else than change in circumstances and uh, change in um, maturation. You grow up, you get older, you learn yeah. things, but uh -huh. it's still you. Yeah. We all have this feeling of this is me. And I know this is even changing from moment to moment because our thoughts are 
changing all of the time and uh, our, our emotions are changing according to what happens and we have a good day and a bad day but there is this underlying identification with yourself mm. there is a personal me even on a very deep level because you know the spiritual teaching they say there is no individual and, and it's all in the mind etc i'm not sure i i have more the idea that even the soul is personal because mm -hmm. i know it's a big word but i have the feeling this vital prescription is actually prescribing on your your individual you could call it incarnation which would mean your soul mm -hmm. that you take with you with all your all the things you learn all your life lessons or all the events that you processed in your particular way there's only one once in a lifetime there will be a you yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> for a, a certain amount of years and then this very individual being this you could say it's, it's a whole universe in itself with all its events and happenings and processes and issues and thoughts and feelings will still take all this individual totality home so yes there's change change is always everywhere but it doesn't uh, contradict individuality mm -hmm. if a person claims i've changed i would say i hope so you know <laughs> otherwise you must have been frozen yeah, yeah. <laughs> it changes all of the time and of course you change when you compare yourself to 20 years ago otherwise you came to a standstill what happened you know that would be strange and peculiar and this by getting older by learning your lessons by all your confrontations and whatnot you mature but that is common and it's you who matures in your particular way even if you're an old person you still have a individual face don't you mm -hmm. it's a different one than when you were 20 yeah still you so for me it's that's only on a theoretical basis i can't see why a patient would need another you remedy as he grows older or he comes in new circumstances yeah i can't see why an animal would become a mineral yeah it's beyond my conceptual ideas yeah yeah i imagine that um people or other other well another point of view would be that your disease or even your sensation is not you yeah. so in that in that sense it can disappear and you can get another one mm -hmm. and therefore remedies can change aha that's an interesting point of view but it's not you what is it then yeah i guess that would lead us to another <laughs> that would lead us to the next week's uh topic <laughs> then, <maybe. laughs> what yeah. is it that can be or what is vital level vital disturbance all these words that we use so frequently but yeah. everybody has a different concept of yes because it's a very mysterious concept isn't it it is mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. excellent so we already know what we will talk about <laughs> yeah great um all right so you shared your perspective on your way of prescribing on what your idea of the similimum is mm -hmm. and how to monitor a case how to tell whether the prescription you made was a vital prescription or whether it was a partial or a prescription on a different level yeah and also your a little bit gave an insight into your concept of what um what is there to be cured yeah yeah that's the main thing yeah yeah that's the main thing that also Hahnemann put first yeah in the role as a therapist so thank you very much Anne for this one 
Okay, you're welcome. And we have a lot to think about <laughs> until next. And I'm very much looking forward to the next one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you there. Be well. Bye bye. You too. Bye. Just bye.